You know, and in the interview, he says, I've never seen anything like that, only in TV and the movies. I've never seen it in real life. And then Jerry said, well, why you gotta kill us? And then Jerry said, shut up and stab him in the stomach. And he's holding her head down, and she's gurgling, and the bubbles are coming up. Um, Gary said, you know what, I love John Hall with my whole heart, and I live to the death. You caused that, right? He threw my brother against the toilet. And then my little brother said, please, Gary, don't kill us. We're too young to die. This story follows Lovita Armstead, a 32-year-old school teacher who lived in Dallas, Texas, and was a mother through her three children, JT, Jared, and Jasmine. She was a strong woman, an excellent mother, and an educator. Lovita desired to complete her family unit and asked her longtime friend, Gary Green, to move in with her and become a father figure for her kids. Unfortunately, Lovita was unaware of the evil that Gary possessed and soon he unleashed his wickedness on the unsuspecting family of four. Thus, this is their tale. Boys recovering today after being stabbed allegedly by a stepfather. Police say the boy's mother and his younger sister died in the attack. Dallas police tell us Gary Green was waiting here at this house for his wife. She'd recently filed for divorce. Both were stabbed to death last night at their home on Morning Springs Trail in Oak Cliff. Police say as soon as she walked into this house, she was attacked and then so were her kids. He'd have them outside and the little girl would ride her bicycle and you know he'd be out with them. Mr. Green out of killing them. You couldn't tell if they were or were not. You know, he was like a dad to them. Lovita had an unparalleled enthusiasm for life, and her radiant smile was a true reflection of her beautiful soul, which seemed to mirror the shining sun above. Her infectious grin had the power to dispel darkness and lift the spirits of those who crossed her path. It's possible that Lovita had detected the inner turmoil and misery in Gary's mind and had hoped to offer him a new beginning. Gary had served 10 years in prison for aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon and was jailed for failing to pay child support. Despite knowing his tainted past, Lovita believed that there was still goodness in his heart. Little did she know that her efforts to bring joy to a place that even angels feared to tread could come at a significant cost. It's possible that Lovita had fallen for the facade that Gary had used to conceal his true nature. An unsettling life. Gary had a traumatic upbringing characterized by violence and instability. In a 2020 appeal, his current attorney, Michael Mola, revealed that Green's parents and grandmother were mentally ill. His father inflicted violent harm on him and his mother and his aunt was slain during his childhood. Additionally, another family member took his wife's life and then took his own life. From an early age, Green spoke about his desire to end his life, feeling like he had nothing to live for. According to Mola, Green met the criteria for schizoaffective disorder, which causes breaks from reality at the time of the slaying. He also had severe persistent depression, manic episodes, and personality disorders. Green frequently talked incoherently, claiming to hear demons and believing that vampires were following him. The Union after a brief courtship, Lovita and Gary got married, starting a union that would condemn her and her family. Lovita welcomed him with open arms, and her children also supported the new addition to their family. However, they became infatuated with him and put him on a pedestal, even though he did not deserve such adoration. And he turned out to be a monster. Separation Gary couldn't conceal his innate wickedness for long, and Lovita's children would be the ones to see the brunt of it first. He began beating JT and Jared completely unprovoked and with a brutality that shook Levita to her core. She may have loved Gary, but she was a mother first, and soon enough, she couldn't take her children's suffering any longer. Gary's violent tendencies were something far beyond what Levita could have ever seen coming. She put her children first and asked Gary to leave her. The Hidden Demon On September 21, 2009, Gary went to visit Levita and Jasmine at their home claiming that his parole officer would be checking on him there. Despite having moved out, he convinced Lovita to let him spend the day at the house. However, this was just a trick to gain entry. A heated argument broke out between Gary and Lovita, which soon turned violent. He tied Jasmine up with a rope and left her on the bed, while he attacked Lovita, ultimately destroying her in front of her daughter. Lovita suffered severe injuries from Gary, who had become her tormentor instead of her protector, and she eventually perished in fear of her child. After taking Lovita's life, Gary turned his attention to Jasmine, but instead of providing her with care, he suffocated her under a tub filled with water and forced her head into the tub floor using brutal force. After finishing his evil act, Gary went to pick up the boys of the family from their church group. 
When he arrived, the boys were surprised, not only by his presence, but also by his attempts to make small talk with them. However, the older boy, JT, felt uneasy and sensed that something was wrong. When they arrived home, both boys were faced with the horrific reality of what had happened to their family. Gary proceeded to try and slay both boys, but for some reason, perhaps to relish in their pain and heartbreak, he spared their lives, and then drove away, leaving the two young boys to try and comprehend the tragedy that had befallen their family and pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. And then Joe said, well, why you gotta kill us? And then Gary said, shut up and stabbed him in the stomach. Um, Gary said, you know what, I love John Mama with my whole heart and I live to the death. He threw my brother against the toilet and then my little brother said, please Gary, don't kill us, we're too young to die. Gary's monstrous mind. The police arrived to find a gruesome scene of demise and destruction. Lovetta Armstead and her six-year-old daughter, Jasmine Montgomery, were both deceased when they arrived at the house around 9.30 p.m. Alongside the corpses, they discovered two letters, one written by Lovetta explaining her intention to divorce, and the other written by Gary Green, which could be seen as a confession of his planned actions on that day. The letter was a window into Gary's mind and gave insight into how he justified his heinous acts. In his twisted perception, the victims had asked for their fate, and he was simply carrying out their will. Praying for his crimes After leaving the house, Green attempted to overdose on prescription medication. He called his mother, who encouraged him to surrender. He turned himself in at the Southeast Patrol substation at 2.15 a.m. On the same day, he gave a confession on videotape. He was taken to the Dallas County Jail and charged with one count of capital slaying with additional charges pending. During his trial, it was revealed that he had a history of violence towards his ex-girlfriends, including knifing and strangling one of them, and physically harming and strangling another, to the point of unconsciousness. Boys recovering today after being stabbed allegedly by a stepfather. Police say the boy's mother and his younger sister died in the attack. Dallas police tell us Gary Green was waiting here at this house for his wife. She'd recently filed for divorce. Both were stabbed to death last night at their home on Morning Springs Trail in Oak Cliff. Police say as soon as she walked into this house, she was attacked, and then so were her kids. The jury also heard testimony from Jarrett and Jerome Armstead and viewed Green's confession on videotape. On October 30, 2009, a grand jury indicted Green on one count of slaying for causing the demise of Lovetta Armstead by fatally knifing her and Jasmine Montgomery by drowning her. On October 28, 2010, the jury found him guilty of capital slaying and determined he posed a future threat of violence, sentencing him to the capital punishment. His bond was set at $1 million. You know, in the interview, he says, I've never seen anything like that, only in TV and the movies. I've never seen it in real life. He's holding her head down, and she's gurgling, and the bubbles are coming up. You caused that, right? And then he's got to turn his head because he's horrified by what he's doing, but yet he's doing it. Waiting for his end. Gary Green is currently scheduled to be fatally punished on March 7, 2023 by his legal team and has been working tirelessly to prevent his punishment. They have submitted numerous appeals, raising 46 points of error from his trial, including challenges to the sufficiency of evidence against him, his confession and jury selection. However, all of these claims were ultimately rejected by the court. On June 15, 2012, Green filed an application for state habeas corpus relief, but the state habeas trial court recommended that the relief be denied on December 31, 2014. He later filed a petition for federal habeas corpus relief on June 13, 2016. In his claim for federal habeas corpus relief, Gary Green argued that he should not be eligible for execution under the Supreme Court's holding in Atkins v. Virginia, which prohibits the execution of intellectually disabled individuals. He claimed that evidence presented at his trial demonstrated deficits in adaptive behavior in areas of academic skills and social and practical skills, and that these deficits were apparent prior to the age of 18. However, his lawyers failed to provide any clinical evaluation supporting his assertions of intellectual disability. None of the expert witnesses who testified before the state habeas court offered an opinion that Gary was intellectually disabled, had ever been diagnosed by a qualified mental health professional as intellectually disabled, or had ever been referred by school or prison officials for testing for intellectual disability. Even the licensed psychologist who presented evidence at his court hearing did not describe him as intellectually disabled. Based on the lack of evidence supporting Gary's claim of intellectual disability, it is unlikely that this argument will be successful in his appeal. 
he'd have them outside and the little girl would ride her bicycle and you know he'd be out with them. Two boys were able to uh... But you couldn't tell the difference. You couldn't tell if they were or were not. <laughs> Wait a minute, what happened? I just got a phone call. He was a very kind lady and she did not deserve You know, he was like a dad to them. Mr. Green out of killing them. An unavoidable sentence. Green has been waiting for his punishment for 12 years on the end row in Texas. It is important to note that while Gary Green's background in mental health may be factors that contributed to his actions, they do not excuse or justify the brutal slayings of Lovita Armstead and her young daughter. His lawyers continue to argue that in fact, the mistreatment Green suffered just might be enough to not excuse but understand why he did what he did. Gary also regularly saw his father hurt his mother in the most violent ways. He performed poorly in school and was constantly in the bottom 10% of his class. His lawyers argued further that Gary comes from a family with a history of mental illness. But in the end, most people and judges simply believe that regardless of how bad his childhood was, he is a monster and deserves to pay for his crimes. Because Lovita and her daughter are gone, nothing Green can do will ever bring them back. It is important to note that allegations of mental illness and paranoid behavior are not necessarily evidence of a mental disorder or intellectual disability. While Gary's lawyers may argue that his behavior is a result of a mental illness or intellectual disability, it is ultimately up to the court to decide whether there is sufficient evidence to support such a claim. The court system has found him guilty of these heinous crimes and his lawyers' attempts to appeal his sentence are part of the legal process. It is ultimately up to the courts to determine whether Gary Green's execution will proceed or whether his sentence will be commuted. Regardless of the outcome, the tragic loss of two innocent lives can never be undone, and their families will continue to feel the impact of their loss for years to come. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.